Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 58 was just released and Goku can turn Ultra Instinct on at will. Now we saw this happen in Dragon Ball Heroes after Goku got his training with the Grand Priest and then he went to fight hearts in them and he was able to just turn on Ultra Instinct, Omen, or they call it Sign now. At least that's how it's translated. Sign, Omen, I guess Sign is the proper terminology now. So just like in Dragon Ball Heroes, now in Dragon Ball Super, Goku goes up to fight against Moro at the end of the chapter and Moro acknowledges that he has Ultra Instinct. Goku shuts his eyes and just turns it on. And I think we all knew that this was coming. It's exciting, but they've kind of been foreshadowing this for a very long time. I think people got a little bit worried because obviously the very last episode of Dragon Ball Super, Goku said, I can't use Ultra Instinct anymore. And we didn't see it in his fight against Broly. So people were getting a little bit worried. But after Goku went to train with Miras, who we found out was an angel and who knew about Ultra Instinct, I think it was pretty clear that Ultra Instinct was going to come back. Now, for the last few chapters, it's mainly just been Goku, Vegeta training. All the Z fighters have assembled on Earth and they're all fighting off against Moro's goons. That's been happening for the last like two or three chapters and now Goku has finally arrived. Now this arc is literally almost identical to the Namek arc. This is literally the Namek arc 2.0. Not only were they on Namek, but Moro is kind of like a Frieza in the sense that he's just this like unbeatable enemy. And I love how when Goku arrives here, it's almost exactly like when he arrives on Namek and the guys that he fights, he just completely annihilates them. You, he's so fast, people can't even see him. It's literally like when he takes on the Ginyu Force. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but let's start off with the beginning of this chapter and start talking about what exactly is happening. Okay. So so it opens up obviously at the end of the last chapter we saw that Goku had just arrived on Earth in an epic anime fashion and now he's pretty much sensing the power levels and the battles of everything going on there on Earth. He's talking to Krillin and Master Roshi and Krillin's asking Goku do you think you can beat Moro and Goku says yeah that's what the training was all about. Um, I think I can beat him. We really need to beat this guy. Now one thing that's kind of interesting and we're going to talk about this a lot more in this chapter is that simply Goku thinks that Ultra Instinct is the key to beat Moro. And why? Like, why would it be the key? I mean, Moro can just siphon all his energy, can just take all his energy. Is 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 Ultra Instinct like some kind of key transformation that Moro can't drink, the, take all his energy out of? Or is Goku hoping to beat Moro before he even gets the chance to use his energy draining techniques? I'm not really sure about that, but Goku is way too overconfident with just Ultra Instinct sign for whatever reason. So Goku's saying he's probably still hiding more of his power and Krillin's like, aren't you worried? And Goku's saying, no, I'm super excited. I mean, this is again, like the classic Goku and the Namek art Goku. He's excited about fighting a new super powerful, seemingly unbeatable opponent. He has a new power up, he's stronger. He wants to fight this guy. And with that, Goku uses instantaneous movement and just teleports to another battlefield here in front of Yamcha and Tien. And at this point, Goku's just gonna start completely wrecking everybody, showing off his new power, which by the way, apparently his base form is stronger as well. As we've seen from throughout Dragon Ball, as you get new transformations and as you power those up, your base form equally gets risen up power level wise as well. So Goku's out here just smashing everybody. Now all these goons have been powered up by Moro. I love this shot here, man. Goku just nails this guy and the expression on his face as he's puking out spit uh, is just priceless. Really fantastic art there from Toyotaru. And Tien and Yamcha say, hey, we can handle it from here. Go help Gohan and Piccolo who are really struggling at this point. Now here's a funny picture. We see Android 18 actually holding her arm. And as some people pointed out on Twitter, uh, this is exactly like Vegeta when he was holding his arm against Android 18 after she broke it. So I thought that was kind of funny. Fans noticed that that's kind of an homage to Vegeta and it's ironic. Good catch there, guys. So Gohan and Piccolo are fighting this very, very strong opponent. This guy, as we'll see from Jacko later, states that he was an incredibly powerful enemy and villain. And basically, like, Jacko asks him, why would you ever team up with Moro? And the guy's like, hey, look, Moro freed me from that prison, and he's strong, and he powered us all up, so we're going to follow him. Now he's our boss, which is some explaining as to, like, why all of these criminals, all these villains are actually, like, helping assist Moro, and they've become his goons. I love the combination attacks here from Gohan and Piccolo. They really shine this off in the Dragon Ball Super manga. I mean, they make Gohan and Piccolo, like, the dynamic duo. 
And I love that. I absolutely love this. Here they're they're doing these flips and then they're dashing around and then they, they bounce off a rock and they charge up a blast together and they both launch it at the same time. It nukes the guy, but he just pops out of the energy unfazed because you got to remember Moro is just unbelievably strong and he's powered all of these guys up and he just starts to wail on Gohan and Piccolo. So this guy's name is Saganbo. He's one of the strongest of Moro's crew now. We also had that guy 6-3, which Gohan and Piccolo have been fighting against for the last few chapters. So among all of these underlings and Moro's army, several of them are super strong, kind of like the Ginyu Force or like Dodoria and Zarbon, for example. And pretty much the rest of them are weaklings. Now, Saganbo is pretty much just destroying Gohan and Piccolo, and they're really having a tough time. And all of a sudden, and Sagambo notices something and BAM he just gets nailed in the face and he just gets sent flying through rocks and has no idea what's happening and Gohan and Piccolo are even in disbelief nobody can recognize that that was actually Goku an invisible Goku is flying around the battlefield just knocking this guy every which way completely destroying him again just like the Saiyan saga when Goku <laughs> lands on top of Nappa's head or the the Namek saga as Goku is just moving so fast Fast, people can't even see him. Uh, this is a very similar aspect, although right now Goku is actually using Ultra Instinct, and even Moro takes notice of this. Uh, he's surprised because he's like that, you know, he knows what that power is, or at least he acknowledges he can see what Goku's doing. Now, Piccolo says something interesting here. He says, I can't see Goku or sense his key. So the reason why he wouldn't be able to sense his key is because Goku's in God form, right? Unless Goku somehow masters some new level of training where he can completely hide his key, but I think it's because mortals are not supposed to be able to sense the power levels of gods or sense the key of gods, and Ultra Instinct is technically a god form, which would make sense as to why Piccolo can't sense his key. Moro can kind of sense him, so he says here that one of them is here, the one who employed instant tr uh, teleportation on Namek, so that kind of gives the sense that Moro can't see him per se, or maybe sense his key, but he does know he's there. I mean, he can sense him better than anybody else, uh, I, I guess, except Jacko. So I'm, that's a little curious. He knows it's Goku. Meanwhile, this guy Sagambo is just getting completely destroyed by Goku. And what Moro's gonna do is he's gonna shoot energy into Sagambo. And we're gonna see this some more in the coming pages, uh, but basically Goku reveals himself and Moro acknowledges that Goku has grown fr uh, far stronger. Goku's saying, yep, I'm not the same I was when we first met. And Moro's saying, I'm glad to hear it because obviously he wants to drink all that power. Now, Sagambo gets up, he's very angry, he's bleeding and he's bruised up. And what Moro is doing is just infusing this guy with energy. So Goku's saying, what, you still want to fight? All right, well, stick around, Moro, you're next. Moro says, go on, show me the extent of your power. I wonder what Moro's voice is going to sound like. Is it going to be like deep and dark? I hope so. I love that. Anyways, Goku goes, I believe this is mastered Super Saiyan Blue. Very cool looking shot there. And Moro says, what's this blue hair? So they never got the chance to use that on Namek against him because their powers were being drained too fast. Sagambo charges in at Goku and Goku just sticks out his hand and it's just one hand blocking everything everybody like Neo from the Matrix. And he's completely destroying this guy who was giving Gohan and Piccolo a lot of trouble. Like this guy is literally nothing for Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Goku's saying you're pretty sturdy, huh? And the reason that he's so sturdy is because Moro keeps infusing him with more of his power. Goku just dodging everything, knocking him up into the air. Um, I love the way Goku is just so overconfident, just completely smashing exactly as I'll say again, just like Goku versus the Ginyu Force on Planet Namek. Again, super Planet Namek vibes from this arc, and I love that because I think the Namek arc was one of the best arcs in Dragon Ball Z. Cell Saga is my personal favorite because Cell is my favorite Dragon Ball Z villain, but the Namek arc just had so much world building and I absolutely loved it. So much characters and development and everything. So Piccolo here is acknowledging that Goku's even way stronger in his blue form. So Goku from his training with Miris and the, their own room of spirit and time just powered him up completely all over. Not only did he get Ultra Instinct, but he got crazy just power up, uh, power and speed out of nowhere just from this training. So Goku's saying, all right, Moro, he's done. Are you ready? And Moro's saying, what do you mean? Look behind you. And Sagambo is still there. He's like, his eyes are gone. So he's like unconscious right now. And he's like, Sagambo, can you still fight? And he said, of course, Moro just 
points his fingers and infuses him with even more energy, which sends Sagambo into a rage. But at this point, it, his body's at his limit, and just infusing him with more power is kind of like hurting him or killing him or something. Goku even acknowledging, like, you gotta stop pumping him full of all this energy. He's gonna explode or something. It's gonna wreck his body. I mean, I guess it's kind of similar to Kaioken. It's by taking this power infusion, it's doing physical harm to his body. And Moro says, Son Goku, I wish to see that technique again. Show it to me. That's exactly like Vegeta said to Goku during the Saiyan saga when Goku used Kaioken to beat Nappa and Vegeta's like, show me that technique. And Goku's like, all right, here it goes. So major nostalgic vibes from this arc. I mean, there's so many points, so many Easter eggs that are things that are literally identical to the Saiyan and Namek arcs. But that's true Dragon Ball. I mean, that's to me, that's much more appealing than something like the Goku Black arc or the Resurrection of Frieza arc. I think that just about every Dragon Ball fan can agree that this is probably the best arc of Dragon Ball Super so far. Like the Tournament of Power was nice, but there wasn't like that real like threat of death. And Moro is really giving that sense of desperation and death. He's like, he will actually kill people and people are literally dying in this arc. And that gives that sense of urgency, desperation, and just pretty much like making fans wonder how in the heck is this going to end? And we'll get to some discussions about that in a minute. So Moro saying that form wasn't the one that you employed those super moves in. And he said, until you show me your earlier form, I'll just keep forcing Sagambo to fight by pumping him full of energy, which is pretty much just killing him at this point. And obviously, you know, he probably knows that Goku is just a softy and doesn't want anybody to die. Goku takes this opportunity to teleport or just move very fast behind Moro and try and attack him. But Moro just, just blocks it, you know, like it's nothing. Obviously this powered up Super Saiyan Blue Goku, while he can defeat everybody, no problem, Moro is still light years ahead. And Goku says, enough is enough. Just let him go. I'll show you what you want to see. And with that, I guess Sagambo had had too much power infused into him. Something happens and it's just like his face like explodes or something. Like, what is this? So I guess he's dead. Uh, pretty, pretty sure he's dead. Again, that's why like Moro is, he's very evil. He's like Frieza, you know? It's like this terrifyingly powerful enemy that will just kill anybody with the flick of a wrist, doesn't care. And nobody is even remotely close to as strong as him. How can the heroes win? That's why this is good Dragon Ball. And Moro's saying, hmm, he couldn't even withstand that smidgen of energy. How pathetic. Goku's saying, wasn't he your friend? You know, just like when Vegeta grabbed Nappa, threw him up in the air and blasted him. He's my friend. I have no friends. Those are my soldiers. They may be gone, but I can always collect more. Goku calls him a scumbag and he says, fine, I'll show you the power I've gained. So Goku literally just closes his eyes and boom, turns on Ultra Instinct. Sign. And that's pretty much the end of the chapter. Moro acknowledges that this is no mortal ability, which explains the God Key. I don't think they've ever really explained does Ultra Instinct have God Key, but I think that was kind of something that fans just assumed, and I guess this is some more further clarification. And Goku also says that this is the initial stage of the technique of the gods. Ultra Instinct Sign. Basically another build-up chapter, but we did get some new stuff. The next chapter is gonna be the banger, right? Because now we have Ultra Instinct Sign Goku fighting against Moro. Again, I don't know what difference that's gonna make, but I guess we're gonna find out. I think Goku's a little too overconfident, and I'm pretty sure he's either gonna get his, his power drained or he's just gonna lose anyway. But Vegeta's gonna be on his way soon as well, and Vegeta is gonna have some major new technique. I'm guessing this technique that Vegeta is going to learn is going to do is ha have something to do with sealing off Moro's ability to drain power. If they're able to do that, if they're able to take away the dark siphoning, right, then they might have a chance to beat him in just pure physical combat. Uh, Vegeta's technique also could have something to do with like rapid healing, so he can just no matter how much power he gets drained, he's always at max power. I mean, there's tons of these Yardrat abilities that he can potentially have learned so far. I'm more excited for G Vegeta to come. I mean, Vegeta could potentially be the key to victory here and that's really really exciting Vegeta need definitely needs some time to shine it's always the Goku show as we know and I have a feeling here that Goku's probably gonna lose in this fight Vegeta's gonna come use some special ability really change the tide of the battle and then maybe Goku and Vegeta will fuse or something and beat him together but I'm really hoping that's Vegeta that takes this W this time around so really fun awesome chapter I loved it guys let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and I'll see you soon for another video Awarda!